Welcome to Black Man Lab. We are live Monday, May 17th. Good evening, everybody. We have an exciting topic tonight to discuss. Um, and, and we look forward to our panelists giving their input. Uh, before we get started, we have some traditions that we do every week. Those of you that have been uh, watching us since we have been virtually uh, doing this, you, you know that we every week we want to make sure that we are in a, a space that we are centered and we are ready to take on information. And um, likewise, we want to make sure that we acknowledge those that came before us. So first and foremost, before we get started, um, I would like to just, if my brother Molly, are you there? I think Molly's having some, there he is. What's up, fam? How are we doing? Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Black Man Lab. Thank you, Brother Marty, um, all the brothers and sisters that are out there. We know this conflict, conflict resolution is one for the entire community, so we're looking forward to a, a fruitful conversation. We just like to always give a little bit of historical context of Black Man Lab. Uh, I am right now at the Davis Bozeman Law Firm where we had the initial Black Man Lab meetings. Um, it was down in the conference room grabbing some pizza, some veggie pizza for my uh, my vegan uh, uh, nephews. And uh, Fred is laughing because he remembers those days. And we just got together and started rapping. And that was four years, almost five years ago now. Uh, it was the summertime. And we just wanted to make sure that the young brothers were going to be safe as they began to prepare themselves. Uh, the oldest of them were preparing themselves to go away to college. And so just some some dads, some brothers, some uncles linking up to have that kind of conversation. And so it continues. So here today in that very same conference room, we will have some of our young creators who are preparing for a big event on this coming Sunday where the young creators of the We Need You project will display their art. They'll display um, song, spoken word, and it is uh, powerful, powerful stuff, man. So I just give thanks to those fathers, uncles, and uh, mothers who have supported uh, Black Man Lab and now Black Man Lab Foundation. And um, we have been doing, this is the last little thing I want to share. We have been doing Stay Woke Thursdays with just the Black Man Lab young creators. We've had Fred Hampton Jr. We've had Inse Ufot from a New Georgia project. We have had uh, Sister Ife Jai from uh, the West Coast drop in on us. We've had Cliff Albright from Black Voters Matter. Uh, we have had uh, attorney, super attorney Allegra Lawrence um, from Fair Fight and from the Stacey Abrams uh, campaign. Um, you name it, we've, they've, they've, we just had Derek Dudley who has managed both Common as well as Jermaine Dupree. Uh, and then most recently, we had Jay Carter from One Music Fest. So it's just been, um, you know, just knowledge getting dropped. Mama Marimba, I need dropped in last week and dropped some jewels on them. And uh, this one will be our last one uh, for a little while. And I can tell y'all who coming on, but Y'all are going to find out. We're going to post all of this stuff later on, some of the conversation that we can. So this is a beautiful moment uh, in the work that we do, and we give thanks to uh, the brothers who continue to sustain the work. Thank you, Molly. Thank you. And um, to Molly's point, this work that these young folks have been doing is incredible. Uh, it just speaks to the ability of our children, uh, of our people, to create, innovate, and, and just do things on a much higher level. Um, because a lot of these kids that have been doing this work, these young folks that have been doing this work for the project, we didn't even know that they could paint because some of them are visual artists. We didn't know any of them could sing. Some of them have been singing, uh, rapping, you name it. Any kind of art, they've been creating it. And um, it's just amazing. And when, when the final product gets out there, uh, we, we sat at, at the rehearsal last night till about 11 o'clock at night 
with them putting this work in. And when you see the work that these kids did, it's absolutely amazing. And it's not only that, it's encouraging and inspiring. So uh, we look forward to you all being able to, to see the information uh, that these folks are putting out uh, with the We Need You Young Creators, Innovators, and Entrepreneurs Project uh, that Black Man Lab has been sponsoring. So without further ado, let's get, get, get moving along into the rest of our uh, program here. First and foremost, uh, I want to introduce two of our other uh, board members that are here with me tonight. Uh, Brother Fred Parham. Brother Fred. <laughs> what up, Marty? Hey, bro. Glad to have you on tonight. Hey, and then my other, my other partner in crime, Brother Jared Grant. Jared, what's happening? All right. They're going to do two things. One, uh, brother Fred is going to going to uh, get get us centered, and then I'm going to ask brother Jared to uh, do libations and bring in the ancestors into this space this evening. So start with you, brother Fred, if you could. Absolutely. Thanks for passing the mic, Marty, and uh, salute to Miley and the young creators, innovators, and entrepreneurs of Black Man Lab, representing well. Look forward to next Sunday. Uh, but for my role, brothers, just want to continue the tradition and ritual of being centered and uh, kind of decompressing from today's uh, business as it is 637 uh, here on the East Coast. So uh, if you would assume a position where you could be comfortable and your posture, uh, particularly your spine is erect, uh, we're going to get centered by taking two sets of deep breaths uh, to release and prepare ourselves for this discussion. So on three, two, one, inhale. One, two, three, exhale. Again, three, two, one, exhale. One, two, three. I want to take a moment to shout out all of the high school and college graduates this year. This spring is that season, uh, particularly Jalen Rice, one of my former students. A shout out to you and all the graduates around the country under the sound of our voice. Back to you, Martin. Man, absolutely. I, I think this year I've seen more graduates than I think I've seen any year of my life, man. It's just like, maybe we just, just the young folks that we know, but um, it's a beautiful thing, man. Love seeing it and our future is bright with them. Uh, brother Grant. All right, brothers. Uh, we like to bring in our ancestors. We like to um, bring in those who came before us. We, we like to speak to the ones that, that we know created some of the greatest civilizations on earth. And we all say Ashe. We also uh, recognize those ancestors that were able to survive the Middle Passage and, and, and slavery. We say Ashe. And, um, and we also want to recognize those ancestors who did, uh, as individuals, who did some of the greatest things, like our Marcus Garvey's and our Mama Moses. We, we want to say Ashe. Ashe. And, and then we want to thank those uh, 10,000 ancestors that made you you know, your own ancestral line, your own bloodline. Um, and so we want to um, put them in our hearts and minds for about three seconds. Then everybody lift up your fist and everybody say I shake three times. One, two, three. I shake. I shake. I oh. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, brother Grant. Appreciate that. Again, we know that this work that we do cannot be done um, without having the spirit of those that came before us with us, um, because we know that the work that they did uh, is, is what fuels us to move forward. So thank you again, Brother Grant. Um, without further ado, I want to get a quick introduction. Molly, did you yeah. want to jump in? Yeah, I just wanted to jump in. I know Gary's moving. I know Baba Wakesa and Brother Original are moving. And I just wanted to really just jump them in real quick and let them let them take off. A lot of people already know uh, Brother Gary Davis. Uh, in my mind, one of the most consistent workers in capturing um, the imagination of our young brothers and giving them an opportunity to redeem 
themselves to stabilize themselves through the Next Level Boys Academy. Uh, brother's been doing it in, in a mighty way. Brother Original is a brother who I've had the honor to work with, who focuses primarily uh, on helping brothers who are, are coming out of incarcerated situations, whether that's the incarceration of their bodies, their minds, uh, due to drugs, alcohol, or, you know, just other things that, that can have us caught up. Uh, he's been doing that work, uh, has been a, a strong, strong supporter, Brother Basil Ellaby, who we all have been working and supporting over the last four years, uh, and many others. And then, of course, we have Baba Wakesa Matsumoya, uh, the founder of Aya Institute, one of our Let Us Make Man uh, founders and brothers who have worked with us for many, many years and works uh, intentionally around um, liberating black minds so that we can uh, work together more closely. So I wanted to do that quickie uh, introductions. Obviously y'all can Google these brothers and find more out uh, about the work that they do. And, you know, it's intense stuff, but I wanted to just jump it off in terms of just even defining this, this, the narrative of conflict resolution. If we can just get two, three minutes from each of you all so we could try to get as much uh, input as possible. When you, when you think of conflict resolution, um, what does that mean to you in the context of black men and women and families? And I wanna start out with um, Baba um, Wakesa Matsumoya, then we'll jump over to brother um, um, Gary Davis and then to brother original. If y'all could just hit it for two or three minutes in terms of helping um, set some context for us. Bob Oikessa, if you're trying to talk, you're still muted. All right, what about now, can you hear me? We can hear you, sir. All right, great, great. Uh, so good to be with uh, brothers uh, tonight and, and every time uh, that I can be in the presence of the brothers. Um, when I think of conflict resolution, what comes to mind? Hmm. Uh, family comes to mind. Uh, unity comes to mind, liberation comes to mind, um, community organization comes to mind. We cannot make family without being skilled at resolving conflict. There just is no way. All right? uh, when you ask people to come together, uh, quarrels happen. Um, in some ways, it's a natural part of getting clear. Um, with any communication, there is going to be conflict. And so we need to be as skilled at conflict resolution as we are at communication. I'll say one of the things that the people have um, uh, kind of messed up or uh, backwards, they want to be a, a good communicator as someone they believe that <clears throat> um, uh, stirs up no conflict. A great communicator is somebody who can communicate it. everybody and anybody can automatically understand. Well, that's actually absolutely ridiculous. Um, and uh, whenever we're communicating, there is going to be misunderstanding or there are going to be differences. Those need to be invited. And those people who invite that are people who are good at conflict resolution. They expect it and they use conflict as a doorway to understanding and to deeper relationships. That is exactly what we need if we're building family. It's exactly what we need if we're doing community organization and organizing brothers like brothers of Let Us Make Man or, or, or brothers or even in your family reunion or on the deacon's board. Um, the ability, the skill at uh, resolving conflict uh, is critical for group unity. Um, it also is critical for personal sanity because I have conflicts within myself. And of course, if, we, if I don't resolve the conflicts within myself, if I can't resolve well the conflicts within my family or organizations, then I resort to what Europeans have taught me, and that is control and domination, which of course gen engenders more conflict and, and the lack of unity, and therefore we can't come out of the situation that we're in. So for me, conflict resolution is a skill. It's not something that happens happenstance. Just as we practice to be a smooth communicator, we need to practice to be smooth conflict resolvers. That's what I'll say right now.
Hopefully Thanks, I was Baba. inside my two men. No, you did perfectly. Thank you so much, Baba Wakessa. Um, Brother Gary Davis, how about you, man? How would you answer that? Hey, man, I, I don't know how to come behind him, but uh, <laughs> but in, in my in my world, good to see y'all, brothers. Uh, so oh, good, good to see you, man. Yeah. Always good to be on here. Um, but in my world, and the population of young people that I work with, man, conflict resolution is a is a major issue that's going on, uh, specifically in the city of Atlanta. When you're looking at all the shootings, all the violent crime, all of the um, you know the fightings in the school because it lacks communication. I think as it relates to young men, communication is, uh, could possibly be a learned behavior. So what's happening is, man, is that uh, the, these, these, these individuals who are very skillful, skillful, for the most part, who are able to teach conflict resolution in the homes are dads, so they're not there. So, um, so now you've got a lot of young men out here that are trying to uh, dispute matters on their own. They don't know how to talk. And, and, and most of the people, your best uh, people, individuals to do conflict resolution are those who are, first of all, respected and those who know how to communicate, those who, who don't really necessarily look for the smoke, for the smoke, man. But I believe um, if we found, if we were able to find uh, more ways to do conflict, to teach conflict resolution uh, to our young people, uh, Preferably around the middle school age, man, we, we would eliminate a lot of murdering that's going on because a lot of people just don't know how to talk and resolve conflict. So mm -hmm. now the first thing they do is they pull in a gun and they're shooting um, or they're fighting. And all it is, and when you when you dig deep down inside of it, when you look at the police report or when you read about what happened, man, it all uh, could have been resolved with just one conversation. And a lot of young people just don't know how to communicate, man. That's just my take on on conflict resolution in my world. Mm -hmm. uh, Academy. Thanks so much, Gary, and that's a great, great point. I think that, um, and, we'll, and we'll dig deeper into that. I think that uh, our young folks just aren't given the tools um, at an early age uh, to be able to talk through things, um, and, and, and quite often it's probably what they see now on social media and everything else. The resolution is. Um, something of violence, right? Uh, so that, that's where they go to. Um, Brother Original, good to see you. And uh, can you please give us your, your thoughts? You're on mute, brother. Yeah. There you well, go. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, um, got a little different take. Um, I appreciate the brothers who spoke before me. It's made some really great points. I think um, as we talk about conflict, let's, it is not just confined to the young within our community. We have raging police conflict right now, um, who, you know, who uh, because of the inability to de-escalate a situation when they see behaviors um, that are threatening, they don't, they haven't been trained. Um, um, we, we, our society, in general, um, it's like this. It's, it's, it's not just our young. They're just, you know, they're just walking like those before them. Um, we have to teach them something different. Um, we have to communicate with them. I think one of the biggest um, problems with communicating, um, which is uh, uh, um, the, the major feature in how to, to resolve conflict, that one of the biggest problems is the inability to communicate. Um, uh, and the biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it happened. We got to learn how to talk to these young folks, uh, 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 and in a manner in which they understand, uh, um, our experience, uh, experience should always give you appreciation toward what you up against. Um, we got to come to them in a manner in which we, which we can teach them. Um, I, um, um, I work with a lot of brothers coming out of prison, and they come, and it, it, it's really tragic uh, in the sense that they come out into a world where there's already the presence of conflict, and they don't know how to address and deal with it. Um, um, uh, conflict red, uh, resolution strategies have to be created. Uh, um, 
to help resolve the issue. Uh, all this adds to recidivism and, you know, just so I was just uh, uh, on my way home and just heard there was a shooting down at Lenox Mall. I, I'm not Lenox Mall, Atlantic Station. Uh, young folks, conflict, you know. Um, we, we have to find a better way of addressing this. And I think we begin with um, establishing as Black Man Lab the com a basis of communicating with, uh, with our young. I'm, that's it. Yeah, thank you, Brother Original. <laughs> uh, You're welcome. Go ahead, Fred. No, I just wanted to uh, kind of do a, a deep dive into what Baba Wakesa led in with, and I see he might have dropped on dropped the call, but I, I'll roll over to Gary if, if he's still on here. When it comes to just conflict being a natural part of human relations, man. So one, that, that should enable us to take a deep breath. I know when I work, you know, with young people in the classroom, you know, it's all about managing emotions, self-management, you know, mm -hmm. what they call the corporate space, emotional intelligence. And I don't necessarily want to throw that link, that lingo around in this space. But right. Self-management is a function of being thoughtful and just self-discipline. And so I wanted to ask Gary, you know, what's what's one or two things that you start with when you try to get someone to incorporate that that behavior or attitude, you know, into their kind of response to conflict? Well, well, your 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 immediate response is is to get is to remove them from whatever situation they're currently in, but we all know that it's more of a deep rooted issue, man. It stems from anger, uh, it stems from a lot of young people that's experiencing so much trauma in their life, and they're not able to act out on the individuals who's creating the trauma. So they go out, man, and just and they're just angry with the world. But the first thing that you do, if you're in the midst of conflict resolution, always remove the young person from the situation. And then you get them a chance to talk about it, man. And at the end of the day, as I keep stressing, is it, is it really about what, you, what you're angry about? Uh, or you really want this beef against this person because he stepped on your shoes or because he disrespected you? But a lot of young people, man, as I stated earlier, it, it's a conflict resolution is a, is, a, it's a, it's a tool that we have to use on a continuous basis just an average conversation, man, and you're in education, you're doing it naturally. You know, Bryce, it really that serious. Hey, man, why don't you step out the classroom for a minute till you calm down? It's just a little basic things because these young men nowadays, man, they, they're trigger happy. And I think because they are hurting so bad that they'll pull a gun, man, they want everybody to feel that pain. But we got to get these young men from these situations, man, and put them in better environments, Parhan, to help That's us. That's true. Well, I agree, Gary, better environments and also kind of like that. I remember back in the day, we used to say count to 10, right? Before you say something and take a deep breath. Uh, I don't know if they still doing that or not, but I still No, they're that. not. <laughs> no, they, they not. They yeah, not. I wish they're not. They, they, they're responding um, because it's so much that they have to prove, man, because nobody, it, it's just, it, 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 but no, they don't count to 10 no more, Parham. That, I don't. I don't, I don't think that happened in the last 10 years. So <laughs> they, they fight it, man. <laughs> right, straight to the gun or the, or the fist. Uh, but Brother Original, I remember you when we were in person at the lab, man. You had an ama have an amazing story, uh, you know, that, that, I, that still resonates with me. And so just I wanted to get your perspective on, you know, how can just men in the community engage. Uh, so for the brothers who are listening, who are thinking about doing something, the fathers who need a tool or two to help with that teenage son like me, uh, you know, what can you give those men, uh, you know, in terms of a one, two, three kind of thing to, to really just kind of step in or a tool they can read or something they can do to help brothers, younger men? Yeah. Well, I, I think um, one of the first things to do is to educate yourself. Um, um, lack of education is very expensive um, and it's showing up. I think mm. um, we have, have a greater sense of integrity within our given communities and model what should be modeled in such a way that it becomes attractive that they seek out to emulate it. Um, 
you know, um, as we talk about conflict, it's always going to be present. Uh, conflict, in fact, if you sit and think about it, um, we live in a world where people get paid according to the conflict in which they can manage, right? The CEO, he gets a lot more money because he's handling more conflict than the, than the janitor, right? More offense. Offenses are going to come. What may not come is your ability to, to have developed coping skills to deal with the offenses that are confronting you. Um, we, we have to give uh, um, our children more strategies on how to deal. And we, we give that to them by how we model, right? Con conflict resolution is often negated because we have a culture that goes against it right now, right? We have a culture with these young folks that goes against it right now. We have to change that culture. We have to change that culture. And, and, and I think, like Gary said, the guy, um, uh, he want to live off image time when somebody steps on the sneakers. We can take, that's not as important. We have to instill better values, more important values, the value of life, how important a life is, because th these uh, young folks today, they're forgetting that, the, the importance of life. And I guess because in the world in which they're living in, some of them don't sit and see themselves as getting any older than what they are now. You know, um, it is unfortunate. I'm 65 and I sit and think um, with, with great sadness that children can't even be children today. They can't, they gotta make adult decisions. So they, then many of them, have, and that's why it's so great to see something like this because we got a, a, a whole masses of children that are not planning for tomorrow because they do not see one. We have to help them see that. We have to instill values back into our community that will, uh, um, that will promote us to seeking out conflict resolution amongst us. Mm -hmm. Bro Brother Parham, I want to go in reverse real quick, man. You, you mentioned something about you and your son. Uh, what, what do you mean by that? I, I may want to be, I may be able to help you because I got young adult and teenagers. I know. Out, <laughs> I can tell you what works best for me, man. So tell me exactly what, what, what were you asking? Yeah. You know, my son, man, he's 14 and he just has that warrior spirit, you know, as we call it in the circle and which was really the impetus of, of developing black man lab amongst other things when Miley and Jerry's son were his age, 14 and 15. But so that has arisen in him. Right. And he and his mom, you know, are, are just banging heads. Right. So I'm, I'm that bridge, you know, giving them that time out modeling for him, you know, how do you be self aware and and so we are going through that process. That was him being totally transparent. That was him on the other line saying, Dad, can you come get me, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I got you, man. But what's the issue? So I had to talk to the mom, talk to his mom and make sure that he wasn't just fleeing some responsibility, but it was something that she was okay with uh, because she knows he needs, you know, just to be out of his feelings and, and get that emotional discipline um, and tools from, from his dad, you know? And so that's where I am in this moment. <laughs> you know, man, to be, uh, Mart, if you don't mind, you about a couple of minutes on this, to be 100% transparent with you, man, to having, teenage sons and, and young adult son uh, who I wasn't in the home with them every day from a previous marriage. As they got older, what I've learned was they there are so many battles that we go through with our sons. So on a daily basis, we're probably battling about five or six things. 14-year-old, uh, now you got hormones, you got so many unanswered questions that you and mom probably haven't been able to answer yet. So what I will suggest, what worked for me, man, was I pick and choose my battles. And those battles that I pick to fight, I, those are the ones that I thought that would probably harm him. But those other little fruit flies, man, I didn't really fool with that because that would give him an opportunity to figure himself out. Uh, all the little basic stuff uh, competing with, you know, what mama want him to do and mama mad about some other stuff. Ain't really got nothing to do with him, got to do with you. So, and then you'll get caught up in that, man. So pick and choose your battles, bro. It, washing dishes is not a big deal to me. 
taking the trash out is not a big deal to me. That's therapy for me. I love doing that. You know, the, the things that I that I try to control is, hey, man, let's talk about this party that you want to go to, man. Uh, you know, there's it's different things like that that you know may uh, put him in, 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 in safe in an in unsafe environment. Pick those battles, man. The other little battles, he'll figure it out, bro. That's just my two cents, man. Thank you, brother, because it was absolutely about washing dishes and him wanting to go shoot ball. Oh, no, man, we got we got other battles we can fight. I just wash them myself. I don't even ask. I don't even ask my kids to wash dishes. But this is what I do know is that I look for every moment that I know they're going to want to communicate with me, right? And that is going to be probably a time you want some money or probably a time that you want to go to a party or some type mm -hmm. of social event. And, and when you get an opportunity, because most boys, young men that fought between that 12 and 18, 19, they're going to give you a good three to five solid minutes to talk, man. And you got to pound it, bro. And while you're in it talking about the party, why don't you sneak in some of them parenting tips, bro? Because after them three minutes, they done. But it's oh, normal. Wow. You're yeah, just normal. You're not the only one in it. I did it. I went through it, I'm sure Maui, Jerry, a lot of us went through it. Pick and choose, Marty, pick and choose your battles, man. And I think everybody's life would be cool. Thank you, brother, That's... for all of our listeners and viewers, because you're right. All and, of us are going through it. And here's the thing. What, what's, what's um, you know, kind of the underlying thing that is being missed is that what you're talking about right there, Gary, is creating the ability in them to have conflict resolution and understanding pick your battles, right? And, and as you continue to have these conversations with them, that level of, of, for lack of a better term, reason starts to resonate. And I think that that's probably all of us here, you know, the reason that we are where we are today, just, you know, not that, not that any of us are, you know, superheroes or anything, but that we've been solidly successful in our lives is that we've been able to manage conflict resolution to this point of our lives. And we've all, I'm sure, had it. I grew up, Molly grew up, we grew up in on the south side of Chicago in Jeffrey Manor. He had to be resolving things every day. Every day we went to the right, right. ball court. You know what I mean? Right. Every day between gang life and, you know, just being on the court and, and, and balling every day, we had to do it. But we were able to do that because, you know, we were fortunate that we had our fathers in our lives that, that did what you're talking about, Gary, um, and that, that helped us in those ways to make us see things differently. And that leads to, go go ahead, Gary. Yeah, and, and real quick, another thing, too, uh, Parham, it's just 14 year old, okay, get that off my mind. Man, one of the things that we don't do a lot and we kind of miss it is to teach them how to take a loss, right? And so because they take a loss, some of them through a divorce, some of them through failing the test, some of them through a broken heart from a girlfriend. There's so many losses that they experience that we never hear about, which is probably a part of the confusion, the anger, the, the, the attitude, the moods, is because they feel like in their way they're losing. So I talk about overcoming the losses a lot with my sons, man. And the thing about it is uh, there's nothing in the world worse than me not having physical access to you, okay? If you fail the test, it's not the end of the world. If you graduate right. from college, you don't know what you want to do. It's not the end of the world. So I often talk about, man, adjusting to those losses that they don't tell you about. That's but right. You got to bring it up, man. And how you bring it up is through your own personal life experiences. And sharing that. Brother Original, I saw you wanted to deposit. Yeah, I, I just want to say, because I, I like what Brother Gary said, but I, I, I think one of the things that we do is we try to foster a mental climate. So and that's where the conflict re resolution actually begins before the incident happens, that we have already spent time. It's hard to, uh, um, to develop this type of coping skill if you're not present um, uh, in your child's life, uh, uh, if you're not consistent, and um, if you're not willing <laughs> to meet some conflict resolution as you're talking to the child, right? We have to um, be steadfast in uh, fostering a mental climate in their mind. So when the incident happens, they already have something to work with. You know, you can't 
uh, 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 um, uh, um, um, try to get it after <laughs> it's needed. You you have to prepare um, before it's needed. So when it's happening, but we gotta have the, you you know we uh, you gotta work to construct the right mental climate have uh, the development of their mind in such a way that they're open to thinking and a variety of, a variety of different ways to reach out to see more than just one option, you know, more than just one option. No, I'm not going to shoot him. I'm going to do, I'm going to do something different, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's real important. Um, I, I got Gary when he said, um, um, uh, um, uh, about being on the south side of Chicago, I can uh, I can occur. I was raised in Harlem, New York, man. Let me tell you, um, um, 16 years old, I had my first prison bid. 18, uh, uh, um, well, went went away for 20 years. So I, I let me tell you, I I understand how we can get trapped into anger. We 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 live in a society that fosters a level of anger. Oh, we lost you for a second there, brother. Brother Original, tell them, uh, take it off of uh, mute, brother uh, mute, Original. Brother original. And, tell them, and, okay. tell them, and tell them what you have achieved okay. up to this point, too. Well, uh, um, I have two master's degree. I'm getting ready to complete my doctor's degree. Um, there's a host of things, you know, but nothing is more important than um, uh, um, I have bridge, uh, um what obstructed me from being a good father to my children you know that that that's the real achievement is that i'm i'm present i'm present in the lives of my children now um after so long of a stand away um um that that that's the real achievement I, you know I, academically i work with a lot of stars i have worked with meek mills a young thug um for the last two years um um, um, a, a lot of achievement, but it all, you know, listen, uh, anywhere where I'm at, it's because of people, um, brothers in my community that took time out of their busy lives to help me. When I didn't have that uh, um, mindset that I can do it, I had, I, had, I had some good brothers that helped me. And I, I'm just standing on their shoulders. There's, there's nothing about me. It's all about all of them who set the example of what I got to emulate and give back to the community, uh, how they took time out of their lives to help foster me into thinking a different way. I say. Yes, sir. And I, and I think that that leads into, you know, the, the we, we always want to look for a means of egress to get our, our young folks moving in the right direction. Right. And yeah. Tonight's conversation around conflict resolution. We know that many of us have been fortunate that we we had some good male role models, specifically as we talk about young men, because typically those are um, where we're looking at these these you know kind of really extreme uh, conflict situations. Um, but what do we do? What do we do? What would you all say is the means to try to get them um, in a different mindset? I know we have things like the Man Lab, but, you know, reaching out and touching the kid, we, we've seen that in, in short order and many a time, somebody who you didn't know, but you saw something going in a certain direction. And I think a lot of times, a lot of us um, have said, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess with that, and you walk off of it. But then there's many of us that step up and say, "Hey, let me talk to you for a second, young fella." Um, mm -hmm. What What do you all think is the means of us being able to, to change that paradigm? And um, I'll start with you, brother Gary. You're on mute, Gary. Change the paradigm as to what's going on with young men. Yeah, with our young folks in, in terms of, you know, what we see right now, right? If there's there's not a necessarily a a, a a figure in the home to help them to to figure out, you know, all these things that we were just talking about before, um, help them to to move into a space of being able to handle conflict. Uh, you see them, I see a lot of that in in your program, right? Uh, what do you think is is a means of helping that along? 
Man, we gotta, we, we're probably at a time right now, Marty, that if the, that we need the community more than ever. Uh, th this is not a one organization issue. This is not a church issue. This is not a school issue. This is not a politician issue. This is a community issue, man. It's going to really take almost, if, if, and if we don't get to a point where you pretty much going to have to adopt a family, and you may not have to move into your house, what I mean is your family is going to be responsible for checking in with this family at least once a week, man. Um, our young people are lost, uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with the lack of uh, male role models. I think, uh, and I don't have to revisit that story as to why they're not in the home, but we got to get the community involved, man. We have a community issue yeah. going out here, but the deep, deep rooted issue that's going on uh, with our young people nowadays, man, and we don't ever want to talk about it, it's the lack of, it's the broken black families, man. There are no more men. These men, they get in a situation, relationship don't work, they go on the other side of town, start a whole new family. They're not going to stay there. Most men are not going to stay in the trenches and fight for their kids. So to answer your question, Marty, we got to get the community involved. We got to get uh, everybody. There's a lot of organizations doing a lot of amazing works. We got to even get even more people involved, man, because other than that, we can continue to lose our young uh, men, men and women um, through whether it's dropping out of the school. Uh, I'm looking at what the pandemic, man, has, believe it or not, has had the highest dropout rate than kids who were going in person. So now kids are dropping out of school with no plans and raising us child alone is difficult. So we just got to get involved as a community, man. Absolutely. Brother Original, did you want to add to that? No, I, I echo, I, I agree wholeheartedly um, that we got to get back um, to the, the basic rudiments of unifying the family structure again. Um, um, we have to have much more of an integral process um, with our children um, and, uh, and be there for them, you know. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it is hard, let me tell you. I got three boys and it's often very difficult uh, um, um, confronting and dealing with some of the stuff, but um, I have to be there for them. Um, and, um, uh, I, I, I just agree wholeheartedly. I don't think there's much more to say after um, Brother Gary there. You, you sum that up very nicely. We got to work out uh, inside, outside, inside the family structure to outside into our communities. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I think within, in doing that work within um, not somebody else's I, ideology, right? We have to do all those things within our own ideologies um, because if we're trying to operate the way that, and I wish Baba Wakessa was still on here, if we're trying to operate within somebody else's ideology, we're going to always wind up back where we started. Um, and Brother Fred, did you want to jump in on that? No, Marty, that's, that's I think, 100% the, 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 the elixir or remedy for some of it is, you know, we've got to just – realize, you know, that our culture uh, is the key to our salvation and the practices um, that we do Sankofa in this space and other spaces, as Gary mentioned. And so I just wanted to say, uh, or really ask and kind of put out there, because I'm always mindful of the single moms, as Gary mentioned earlier, you know, and I wanted to say to the brothers, what does a good example of, you know, somebody being effective at resolving conflict? We're talking de-escalation, you know, strategies. We're talking, you know, take a pause and take that deep breath. Uh, so I'd like to ask the brothers, what is a good, good example so moms can see and can have a target of where they want to get to? What are some good, good examples of uh, good practice with conf resolving conflict? I, I, I would say, man, if you're in position to uh, de-escalate the situation, I mean, if you're in position to to catch the situation before it escalates, uh, is always the best thing to do. If you're a parent out there, you know your child. I mean, you carried them for nine months, so you know them better than they know themselves. You met them, you know, before they met themselves. So uh, I would say just just kind of catch it in the beginning, but we got to go back to the communication, man. I mean, you got to, because I think... 
if you know your child well enough, you want to know what sets them off. All right. And we got to, as a people, especially, and it was hard for me to do this. We got to get our kids into some form of behavioral mental health services, man, some, some anger management, because we're thinking that, on, you know, we went through a lot of stuff and they're okay. They're not okay, man. But it took me 16, 17 years to realize that my good, innocent looking son just may have anger issues. And then when he took the anger management class, and then another thing that I had to do, and you got to do this too, especially when your kids are in public school, they're around a lot of different drugs, alcohol, and all this. Every six months or to a year, just give them a random alcohol drug assessment, just out the blue, okay? Because alcohol and drugs are not just to tell you, you know, to see if you're using drugs, but in the assessment process, it tells about the dangers of the drugs. And we don't like to do that, man. We all like to be the super parents, the superheroes. But listen, man, get your kids the services that you need, because if you need it as a working adult with resources and with money, imagine what they're going through when they don't have nobody to talk to, when they don't have nowhere to lash off this anger. So to deal with the conflict resolution parents from the beginning, just nip it in the bud. And the best way to do that is just talk about it. Communication wins every single time in their language, by the way. I love it, Gary. Bro, Reginald, yeah. you got something you want to lay Yeah, I, I agree with Gary again, but you know, um, like I uh, said earlier, the biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it happened. You can't communicate with someone if you can't identify the issues, uh, you got to be clear mm -hmm. about what the problem is. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, with the children, we got to understand everybody's uh, interest. What is the interest? You know, uh, um, um, you got to be able to evaluate the options. Um, you got to be able to um, um, apply some contingencies if necessary. There's a, you know, um, um, you know, you got to be able to list possible um, solutions um, when we're talking about uh, conflict resolution. But it, it, I, I think it, it begins with you understanding something about that person where you look for some level where you can connect with that person on, right? Now, that's, that's how we, we, we make, we birth the, the, the resolution to the problem. How can I connect? After I have identified what the problem is, what the interest, how can I um, connect to some interest that be, if the the person has to see a reward in, in changing his behavior, you got to see a reward in changing the behavior. But you can't do that if you don't know the person, or you 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 can't evaluate what you all have in common, how to get a, 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 um, um, uh, to resolve this problem. If that makes any sense. Absolutely. And you can't solve a problem with a problem. I mean, if you're in a situation as a parent, your two kids are beefing, or you're an educator, your students are beefing, you can't solve two conflicts at the same time. You got to remove one from the situation, one from the environment, de-escalate one at a time. Because when you try to do it at the same time as a parent, it makes it worse because you can be very careful by siding with one, and they may think that as well. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. I, I well, think no. I think Gary that. You know that you know here, here here we can have two different therapeutic uh, um, techniques applied. I love uh, it, right? <laughs> and, uh, because I I I I I think sometimes you have to separate them. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it can work together, and each of them can get a hand-on experience uh, on how to work through the work through the problem. It depends on the child. It depends on the people, you know, every children is different. Now, I, I, my two boys, I can maybe put them to the side, um, work with them together and say, you know, and talk to them, but, and, and not in all cases. So uh, each situation has to be assessed for what therapeutic framework we're going to work from. Well, I think that makes sense. It does. I think the community benefits brothers, you know, for, with multiple strategies. And so I, the point oh, yes. you make specifically about knowing the young person, uh, particularly if they're in your house, because I know Gary, as an educator, 
you know, I taught middle school for a number of years and that's what moms would say almost a hundred percent of the time. Right. It's like, I don't know him anymore. He comes mm -hmm. in, he doesn't talk to me. He gives me one word answers. And so that's where I see the beginning of the disconnect right. actually in my experience. And, uh, but, but just being able to communicate and be aware, you know, of your child in your home, uh, is, is the beginning of, de-escalation you know even before it starts so. most definitely yeah I, I think i think to your point fred um you know the 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 ability to to see it happening and and, and be able to jump in before it, it gets to you know that es escalation point is is key um you know there's unfortunately we we just don't have today um you know, we don't have enough men that are affecting that in the community, but there are a number of organizations, you know, of course, like Black Man Lab, of course, like Next Level Boys, um, that, you know, do, do um, pull kids in and give them the opportunity to learn, you know, um, first and foremost, um, not necessarily just about conflict resolution, but about life. And I think as as our young folks understand the bigger picture of things, um, that that em, that implores them to um, want to want more for themselves, which in itself will make them say, "I'm not going to pull this trigger, right? I'm not going. I'm not going to get into this fight." And I, at one of the questions that we have from Facebook, I was trying to find, I lost it, um, was something around um, what are those kinds of things that, that as far as organizations um, or different activities that you all can think of that will put people, put our young folks in a, a position that they can um, see life in a different, different light, if you will. Um, and anybody can jump in and answer that like resources, organizations and resources, organizations, they resources things, website. things to do. Yeah. I, I like boxing. I, uh, I got, I got a, a 12 year old uh, grandson. He wanted to be a tough guy. I brought him down to Buckhead boxing gym. And uh, um, uh, one of the coach Terry is a friend of mine. Said, Let him go ahead and get it. Now he, he, he he he's he's slow to raise his hands now uh. in, in class, and he's developing <laughs> he's developing a sense of discipline because mm -hmm. now he wants to be a boxer. So he's getting up running, and um, you know he's uh, you know boxing it teaches you a respect, um, um, and to not to be a bully, and um, um, he he's getting it. But I think physical activity is good. Um, definitely, it has to be something we have to reward them. Uh, with changing behavior. We have to reward him with changing behavior, you know. Um, he likes how he feel about himself going there. He said, you know, he called me Pops. He said, Pops, look at this, man. Look at this combination. And I say, okay, you're doing pretty good there, you know. Um, um, uh, um, like Fred said, you, you have to know the child, you know. You know, have to know the child to create the strategy that's going to be needed. And, um make them want to, to embrace a change in behavior. Yeah, and, and I'll add uh, with Brother Original, um, jump in here and just say, you know, I think, you know, we, we have to model what we expect uh, as parents. You know, on one hand, you know, you can't turn, and I've seen this so many times as well, you know, you can't turn and say, don't fight at school, cussing them out completely in the same breath. Yes. You know, because you're, 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 you know, you're just, taking the kid's self-esteem along with all of that. And as, as Gary said, you're depositing anger and mm. it's, it's, it's submerged, but he guaranteed to explode like a toilet that's never flushed. Right. And so for me, you know, just parents, I would just say emotional intelligence practices, just educate yourself, get smart, you know, yourself, because a kid is only what they see. You know, I work with a hundred black men of Atlanta, and that's the national motto. The kids will be what they see, both in professional pursuits and aspirations, but also just in behavior and attitude. Brother Gary, do you want to add to that? 
Yeah, man, I think one of the issues that we have at Marty is that uh, when you talk about programs, when you look at after school summer camp programs, that's typically for kids five to 14. And you mm -hmm. ate out the program during the time that you really, really needed the most. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, and here, according to Brother Parham and myself, so we ran out of school and programs for uh, 10 years. And I noticed that, you know, the kids that needed the most are the young people that come to us on Saturdays. But by that time, you're so deep into it. So we just got to get maybe get with some of these, you know, again, man, it's going to go back to the community, man. And is this is just an imaginary world if, you know, if a park opened up their rec center and you got maybe 10 brothers who can just volunteer two or three hours out of the day to go and mm -hmm. provide after school, provide summer camp. That's just a realistic world that we have got to do as a people, man, because it's happening. Trust me, it's happening. It's happening. There are a lot of people that's coming together as a community that's saving their community by volunteering their time. And when you're thinking about mentoring, man, if you got a camp for 14 year old to 16 year olds or 14 to 17 year olds that's running throughout the summer and the camp is from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., you're telling me in eight hours, you can't get eight brothers to do an hour out of all the brothers that's in Atlanta, man. So until we do that, mouthful man, there. yeah, so we do that, man, we're going to be in a world of trouble. Three things, Parham, that's, that's going to, it's going to get the 14-year-old to check out. <laughs> Hormones, sex, marijuana. Got to stay on top of that, man. When they start, they start partaking in those three things, that's another individual that you have to meet that you got that, that that's going to have to introduce you to them, man. But uh, those things I've seen it in so many years, you know, Marty, I think I just wrote my first book, raising him without him. Come on. And I talk about those things to, to these mothers and these fathers who are out here raising these young men by themselves, man. You got to know those signs and you got to be very, very familiar with the nonverbals. Because 12 year olds and up, they don't talk about it, man, because it's not really important to us. We're old. We don't know anything. No matter what we wear, what we listen to, we are old to our kids. Absolutely. And Gary, while you just gave us that book title, I'm actually to give us that if I can, Marty and Brother Original, uh, for our listeners and viewers who want to get in touch with you. How can they? Um, and what can they look to, to get in touch? Uh, what, what you said to me, my phone went Gary, out. Oh, Gary and Brother Original, you just mentioned your book, uh, Gary, that queued me up. So definitely want to give both. Yeah, you can go uh, to learn about the organization. You can go to nextlevelboysacademy.com, nextlevelboysacademy.com. You can learn about the organization and also you can look at the book. You can follow us on all social media outlets, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Next Level Boys Academy, and to learn more about uh, me and about my book, my speaking engagements, uh, my uh, Raising Him Without Him symposiums, you can go on IamGaryDavisSenior.com. Bro, original. You're on mute, bro. You're on mute. Uh, I like that, Gary. I'm going to read that. I'm going to get that book and support you with that, man. That's a uh, great I thing. You're doing some big things, man. Um, I'm not as apt as you, Gary. I got to get better with the social media. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just do. I'm kind of afraid of that computer, man. I just, um, met many challenges. That's not <laughs> one that I've been able to um, triumph over yet. Um, but you can check me out. Um, WW Counseling with the Michaels. Um, um, I have two counseling offices. Um, just hit me up there on, on the web, www.counselingwiththemichaels, or you can um, look on um, Twitter, the Original Speaks. I put something out there every day. Nice Love little that. inspirational quote. Please uh, follow me. I thank you all guys so much for tonight. Man, we are so man. glad to have you all, man. As always, yeah, we, Thanks, we, uh, we know you, you both have um, been on here before, you know, many a time, and, and we love having you all on. Um, but you're not done yet. We, we still, we're going to hold you as long as we can, man. Uh, let, let's talk about um, what does 
the what do you all have as you've had your interaction what does social media do uh with with our young folks well, do you do you think that that has had some effects on um you know these different cl- conflicts that we see with our young folks now um and i'm asking that because so much stuff gets posted now um it's almost like is 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 it just cool to do some something with violence and post it? Is that influencing? What do you, what do you, and I'll ask you first, Gary, because you deal with these with young folks every day. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Man, my son, uh, Marty, uh, is, was a freshman at Troy and had to do a paper on the damaging of social media to young people. Mm. I wrote the whole paper. He made an A on it. It was just, <laughs> I was just that knowledgeable about it. Man, listen, man, just imagine. So now, you know, we we are, you know, a lot of us are parenting out of uh, guilt. A lot of us are parenting out of so many things. So we're giving our kids things at such a young age that they shouldn't have until they're older, like cell phones in elementary, middle school. And then as soon as you get that, you download Instagram or Snapchat, anything like that, which immediately gives you access to the world. So at this moment, you have access to people that are not mature enough to understand. Uh, they can maneuver, they can convince you that your parents are wrong, that the parents don't know what they're talking about, and that going to school is lame and, and, and getting the education is lame. So the damaging of social media, man, it gives them a make-believe world that, uh, that looks very, very easy. And then, you know, you look at the nice cars, you look at the jewelry, but you never... I mean, you see all of that glory, but what Instagram doesn't do, it never gives you the story. So, and you got these young people who are out here looking at another 19 year old, flashing money, driving nice cars, but they don't know if it's theirs. They don't know if it's stolen. I got a million stories as to, you know, how the boys are getting cars nowadays, but man, it's just damaging, man. I think psychologically it's not ready. I think it was designed to be that way. Uh, it's an addiction and it's hard to parent against that. That's another thing for, for the, for the parents that's out there listening, just parenting and competing against social media is very, very tough. But because, you know, our kids can catch us in a guilt stream that we can't tell them to get off social media. We, you know, we can't just be grown enough or be enough parents to say, okay, you can have a phone, but you don't need no Wi-Fi. You don't need no internet. We can't do that because our kids, because of the way that we have had challenges in our relationships, challenges in our marriages, they have somehow found a way to manipulate, to get out of us whatever they want out of us. And the thing that they want the most is Instagram because Instagram gives you an ability. Any social media gives a young person the ability to be everything they want to be without working for it. And that is what- <laughs> Go ahead, man. That was excellent. Mm. Mm, that you said a yeah, mouthful man. right there. Boy, he sure Lab. did. Listen, I'm already ordering the book. Come on, Black <laughs> yeah, Man man Lab, y'all yeah. better catch up. Yeah, that was excellent. But nah, G, I, yeah, G, if if I don't want to even try to add a period to what you just said, I just hope our listeners and viewers will be savvy enough to catch it. And so as as Marty said, the, the impact of social media is is just crazy important and a lot of times parents don't even when they give them the phone they're too young but then you know it's this whole mythical my kids should have privacy thing is is bananas when they're 13 14 15 man you got to inspect what you expect as a parent you know as a leader you have i've served in the military i'm a veteran and, you know, when the, when the captain came to talk to the soldiers, he didn't come talk to the sergeants. He came and talked to the soldiers, right? And, and you basically, I learned that principle there. Inspect mm-hmm. what you expect. And uh, so, parents, I hope that that is a part of your regular routine, uh, in addition to the six-month <laughs> biannual drug and alcohol assessment. <laughs> you, you know what, man? I think that's interesting for us as parents, right? is that what we miss is is us at that age right when you were that age 
you would take advantage of whatever you could because at you know 14 that early teenage those those teenage years period all the way you know it man even into your 20s really all you ever thinking about is you and how to manipulate the world so that it works for you and so you're 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 gonna try to tell your parents how important it is that you have your privacy social media all these things and then what we do is we wind up buying into it because you know the other cultures tell us we should do that you know no well, go ahead you brother. know let me let me say this what i believe is is that social media negatively impacts our youth it it has them uh, um it positions them to be exposed to something that they can't be responsible to right i mean it is it, it ain't even a natural process to mm. be overlaid overloaded with all this information coming in right and to be at the access um you have access uh, uh access to worlds of information that you can't possibly you can't possibly be responsible to at this young age Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, it's a it's a dangerous thing. You know, there's been a whole bunch of studies that have showed there's a strong link between uh, uh, um, social media, depression, anxiety. I, I love what Brother Gary said. He said it so eloquently. It allows them to become something they ain't worked for, right? Uh, um, that was that was excellent, excellent. Um, it, it positions them. It really puts them in a very um, uh, uh, a place of great peril, you know, a uh, uh, very uh, place uh, uh, that is very precarious. Um, um, and our job, I, I agree. We we uh, I mean, we need to lock down set times. Set times of being a responsible parent. We need to set times. Um, you got this time to um, to be on the computer. That's what a responsible, loving parent and supportive parent does. I only want you on for this time. I don't know what I just did. Gary, Gary, uh, Gary I see you shaking your head. Yeah, no, we, can't, we can't do that, man. Give it to me, G. The no, no, not, we, we need to do that. But, but, but I, can, I, can, I love the debate, Brother Original. We could do this all yeah, night. Yeah. But what I'm saying to you, the problem is that kid, children being children, the problem is parents can't be parents. See, you, no, lost, I agree with you. you lost control of your kid at the age of four years old. You gave them their own room, their own bed, their own television. I, I'm willing to bet you the last letter on this word, believe, that there's not a parent on this call that can, can tell their child tonight, I want you to get off social media and stay off of that to further notice and not deal with the attitude. Because our kids have got us in a point of situation, man, that we need them. See, we've gotten away from the fact that they need us, man, and they do it through manipulation. And the main way they do it, where it all starts, with the broken families and with this social media, man, you can't compete with it, Brother Reginald. I'm telling you. You, 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 you yourself done said it. They need us. They need us. And we have failed in our responsibility to show them that. I think... You know, and I, but we don't I, have to. I, when I, we I got guess. cell phones, and when we have cell phones, no, video no, games. They should earn a cell phone. We should make them responsible to, for earning a cell phone. It ain't gonna do, happen, sir. Do, do good behavior. It can happen in this house. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it depends on the house that you. Live. Hold on, let unfortunately, me you can't hold thirteen thousand and struggling with it in Atlanta. That's the only bad part. I mean, <laughs> so, we we cannot listen. We, we cannot just readily accept um, our past negligence and let it be perpetuated by a continuance of it. What we need to monitor what these children are doing in our homes, in our homes. We need to Brother take back Rizzo, Brother Rizzo, and be you parents. Know, you know as well as I know. About 10 years ago, they've given black folks access to more money they ever had in their life. So now you don't even have to raise your kids off love, commitment, and time. All you can do is raise them up how much money you got in the bank. So when we on. start getting access to the money, man, we ain't got to do on. it no more. We can go out and get them a car at 16, but you didn't get your first ones at 21. That you bought. 
So now, man, we just yeah. got access to too much, and we're letting that too much raise our kids, man. But I appreciate I, I, how you put it, how you go, man. But we can't get the thirteen thousand in Atlanta that's struggling with this to come move in with you, good brother. <laughs> oh, brother! Original said, "In my house, in my house, that's right. in my but, house." But guess what? If we had more dads, we like do something. That's right, G. A, if we had more dads like you, I don't think I would have a job, man. So you will be out so. of work, G. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, um, and I, I just think that's what it takes. Um, it begins in your house. What is acceptable? Mm. What is acceptable begins in your house. And I don't care that it's happening in everybody else's house. What is acceptable begins in your house. If you think it's acceptable, okay, it's not for me. I see the dangers of it. You know, I, I see the dangers of not censoring my children mm. and where it leads to. You know, our prisons are filled. They're filled at a younger age. You know, at a younger age, we have more, more, uh, we, we have more uh, uh, use in, uh, 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 black men in prison than we got in college. You know why? Yeah. I mean, listen, we got, you, we, I, yeah, I know why, because exactly what I'm telling you, we are not monitoring our children. We're not monitoring them in the home. So, so what do you say, Brother Gary? Why the prisons are overflowing? Yeah, because it offers more than than schools do nowadays. I mean, you can go to you know, mm. first of all, you go into school. School is taught at one pace, man. Typically, the pace of a female or a young man who's really interested in a career. Mm -hmm. So now you get in school. It's taught at one pace. Young man get in school. You know, if he if he moves one too many times, I go tell him to open up, throw a pill in his mouth, and if he kick the door the back of the seat another time, you're gonna put him out then he's going to eventually become interested in school. So my thing is, why do I have to go somewhere for 13 years to become anything? Okay, because it's not an interest level, man. But when you think about prison, that's where the big homies are. That's what, to my understanding, where most of the drugs are. Y'all are learning trades. Y'all getting GDs. Y'all got libraries. Y'all got your own pastor, your own, I mean, the thing about it is, what I've learned, Brother Original, I, we, we divert 200 years of prison time a week. And what I'm struggling with at Next Level Boys Academy and our diversion program is that jails and prisons have become a rites of passage, okay? Mm -hmm. That is where you go because every this is why I don't allow many people who's been to prison come and speak anymore because all the successful people that was coming to speak went by way of prison first. So now they're thinking in my mind, shit, I go to prison, I save my money, I do my 10-year bid, I come out, I own a club, you know, I own restaurants, I can go out and get all this. So, man, there are not enough, are not enough people such as ourselves, man, who are presenting other ways to be successful in life outside of going to prison. And we just lack, we just lack multiple male role models in the city of Atlanta, man. Because a lot of people are just so self-centered, and these yeah, young people yeah. oh, are struggling. Gary, don't get me started about lacking <laughs> and engagement in the city of Atlanta. But I know we up against time, Marty. Boy, I could talk this this conversation yeah. right here. No, oh, I'm yeah, I'm loving it. <laughs> we we up against time, Marty. <laughs> Obviously, as we when we as we've been having these great topics on Black Man Lab for the pet for the beach since the beginning of this year. Um, we, we, we have to revisit it, right? We have to revisit it um, and, and have a deeper conversation even more on this topic um, because it, uh, an hour and whatever we do, hour and a half, whatever it is, is not enough time um, because it's so, there's so many intricate pieces of it. Um, you know, you talk about, you talk about the prison system, uh, you talk about the home, school. You, talk, you talk about school, you talk about, you know, obviously society, right? And, and, and where we are in our society um, as black folk um, and, and, and white supremacy and how that affects all these things uh, as it relates to us as black folks in our community. So um, we could do a completely deeper dive even on this, man, because um, there's so many things that, we, that, that, that we want to touch on. I will say 
to Gary's point uh, and to Brother Original's point, um, organizations like the Black Man Lab are are um, a, a huge piece, and there's other organizations like us out there are a huge piece, and we have to continue to reach. Um, anytime that we are seeing, and Fred, you know, being part of the board, anytime that we see any of our young black men out there, whether they're doing great or whether they're they're not d doing so great, we try to reach them and tell them to be in the space in some form or fashion um, because we know that those touches make the difference. What Gary's doing, those touches make the difference with Next Level Boys. Um, Brother Original, what you're doing in terms of um, touching on the prison system makes the difference. So um, we need other people. If you're listening out there, if you if you're not part of an organization, start one. Um, if you if you are uh, um, looking for organizations, reach out to us and we will we will put you in contact. Um, Maoli, are you there? Uh, I'm here. I just can't bring my video back up. Okay. Okay. I, I I didn't know if you wanted to jump in before we're going to wrap up here, guys. As we're up against the clock. Um, brother Gary and brother Original, we do this every week. We always ask, what are your habits, rituals, and disciplines that you do on a on a on a daily basis that keeps you moving forward? So if you could real quick touch your habits, rituals, and disciplines that you do, because we want we want to put that out there as information that maybe somebody might might tap into one of those habits, rituals, and disciplines that you do to help them move forward every day. So if you could, I'll start with you, Brother Original. What are your habits, rituals, and disciplines? Uh, I, I wake up um, in the morning about 4.30 with, with intentionality. I, I wake up with not letting the day happen to me with me happening with the to the day i have a purpose in mind for that given day you know so um 5 30 i'm in the gym i uh do my exercise uh, uh 6 30 i'm preparing uh, um, um to go to my office driving to my office i say my uh wow my office is about an hour away i live in lawrenceville um my my office is down in Atlanta, so it takes me about about an hour. Um, I'm listening to something very inspirational, a podcast. It might be T.D. Jakes or somebody um, 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 feeding my mind on, and saying my prayers as I'm going. Uh, and that's something I do every day. Um, um, that's pretty much it. Appreciate that, brother. And that is, it's great to yes, use. Sir. When I used to be on the road, that was – that was my thing was, you know, put some sort of uh, uh, inspirational something on, on the ra on the radio while I was playing, while I was driving, man. So completely get that. That's a great one. Brother Gary, how about you? Hey, man, just my habits, man, is just setting the expectation the, the night before. Uh, doing what I'm, ex uh, what I'm supposed to be doing, coming outside of self. Uh, the ritual, man, is wake up every morning. It's something I started doing. Uh, probably within the past six or seven months. I've never did it before. I just wake up in the morning, man, just go to every room in my house to make sure that my wife and my kids are still breathing. Um, that, that's that been a, a great place. And then um, and I just give God the glory, man, for all that he's done and all that he wants to do for me and the people, man. So um, very, very simple, man. But for the most part, just come outside of self, man, and just know that um, this world is not only about me. And I'm not the only one in this world because if it was, we wouldn't have any problems uh, and, and that I couldn't solve because they're my problems. But, uh, no, man, I just appreciate this opportunity every time. It got so good, man, with Brother Original. I thought he was going to take me on a debate. I had another call to start at 7 o'clock, but the energy was so good on here, man. I was like, hey, man, somebody else run that. Man. <laughs> Thank y'all, man. I love it, G. That. Love that, G. Love that, man. I got the book, G. Good. I, and I got to get it as well. Um, and what you said there, uh, Brother Gary, was 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 great too in terms of your habits. Um, you know, my my grandmother told me long ago, uh, and again back to my teen years when I was my selfish self. She said, "You're gonna really learn to enjoy life when you learn that it's not about you." Mm. I that stuck with mm. me until I learned that it was really not about me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like all, when I was a young person, I heard that all the time, but it, I still was trying to make everything about me. And then right. maybe when I hit around 40, I was like, wait a minute, this, this, 
ain't none of this about me, <laughs> you know. Right, right. You know, give me a, but then life becomes enjoyable as well. So appreciate that, man. Look, man, again, I can't thank y'all enough. Um, every week we close out the same way, man. Um, Queen Mother and Jiri Algani every week when they had, or every time they had a meeting within Cobra, she closed it out with a link in this chain. And we do that same thing here at Black Man Lab. Normally, when we're in the same space at the at the Andrew and Walter Young YMCA, we link arms. And it might be 250 brothers in there. We'll all link arms. And then we repeat this every week. So we're going to do that here. We're going to link arms virtually, if everybody could. And then just repeat after me. I am a link in this chain. I'm a link in this chain. And it won't break here. And it won't break here. I'm a link in this chain. And it won't break here. And it won't break here. And it won't break here. I'm a link in this chain. We are links in this chain. We we are links in this chain. And we won't break here. And, and we, we won't, won't break, break here. I say, brothers, Ashe. thank you. Ashe. Appreciate you. Love you. Keep pushing. Keep doing the work. And uh, keep changing lives, man. That's what we got to do. We got to keep changing our, our our people's lives, man, so that there's a better future when we are long gone, man. All right? I say, brothers. Thank Ashe. you for that, G. Thank and you, original. Thank, thank you, you all. I appreciate you. All right. Love y'all, man. Be good. Love y'all too, my brothers.